As we begin part two, please be sure to listen to part one of this series on marriage and divorce so you can understand the Bible definitions of important terminology that pertains to marriage and divorce. Remarriage and Divorce The perfect will of God is for one man to marry one woman and be faithful to one another until death, according to Matthew 19.6 and Romans 7 verse 2. The Bible teaches that married couples are bound to one another until death and are not free to marry anyone else while their first spouse is living. All those who do so are committing adultery and, without repentance, will not inherit the kingdom of God, according to 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11. Remarriage is only allowed in two cases. The first case is that a widow or widower may remarry another believer who does not have a living spouse. This is because a widower is no longer bound to their previous spouse because that spouse has died and they are free to marry again, but only in the Lord, or only another Christian. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 39 The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. Romans 7 verse 1 Know ye not, brethren? For I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she should be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. The second case for remarriage is that a man only, not a woman according to Jesus, may put away his wife in divorce and marry another if she did not confess any fornications she committed before they were married, according to Matthew 5.32 and Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 21. Because their vow of engagement would then be void due to dishonesty, as clearly seen through the Bible example of Joseph's potential divorce or putting away from Mary, as at one point he believed she had committed fornication. But we know God revealed the Immaculate Conception to Joseph before he put her away. Here is what Jesus taught in Matthew 5, verse 32. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. So, I repeat, Jesus and St. Paul taught that divorce and remarriage with a living spouse is only allowed in this one and only case, unconfessed fornication before marriage. Some may question why Jesus said only a man may remarry for fornication, and the answer is simple. The woman, Eve, was the cause of all sin in the human race because she was first deceived by the serpent and then commanded to be under complete obedience to her husband. Because she was the one who initially fell into sin, God forbids her to remarry with a living husband, as well as God even forbidding women to preach the gospel, according to 1 Timothy 2, verses 11-15. through 15. The only way a woman can remarry a second or more time is if her first husband has died, which looses her from the law of her husband. God has displayed this pattern all throughout Bible history, such as in the days of Abraham, David, and Solomon. The man could have multiple wives, but the woman could not have multiple husbands. All due to the fact that Eve was deceived in the beginning by the serpent, and death entered the human race through her being deceived. You must know that God allowed polygamy in the Old Testament, even though it was not His perfect will. But today in the New Testament, God does not allow polygamy according to the teachings of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 19, verses 1 to 12, Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 to 32, Mark chapter 10, verses 1 to 12, and Luke 16, verse 18. Our Lord Jesus taught we, New Testament believers, are to go back to the beginning with one man being fully committed to only one woman. Adultery and Separations Concerning Adultery Contrary to popular opinion in many churches, adultery, when one spouse has a sexual relationship with anyone else who is not their spouse, 
is not an acceptable cause for divorce and remarriage. This is true because there are no New Testament Bible examples of any believer being allowed to remarry because their spouse committed adultery on them. Adultery does not lose someone from the law of their marriage vow. If adultery takes place in a marriage, the couple must seek forgiveness and remain together. For if they separate and marry anyone else, they have committed adultery. If adultery takes place and one spouse wants to divorce and does so and remarries another, the remarried spouse would be living in adultery. But the divorced spouse must remain single, or else he or she will be an adulterer as well. This is the hard truth, but Jesus specifically said fornication, not adultery, is the only cause for divorce and remarriage. Many churches have misinterpreted St. Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 15, which state, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. This scripture cannot contradict what St. Paul wrote in verses 10 and 11, because those verses already gave the only two options for couples who divorce or separate. They must either remain unmarried or be reconciled. Notice that after verse 15, St. Paul never instructs the believing spouse to remarry anyone else. And that is because a spouse who is divorced or separated cannot marry anyone else according to the word of God. The true interpretation of verse 15 is that a believing spouse who has an unbelieving spouse who divorces or leaves them is not to be under bondage or slavery to continue to meet that person's needs. For example, if an unbelieving man leaves his believing wife, the wife is not to remain a slave to the man and try to go to his new house and continue to cook his meals, clean his house, or serve him in any other way because he left her. She is not bound to meet his needs anymore if he divorced her. But she cannot remarry another spouse because St. Paul gave her two options in verses 10 and 11. She must either remain unmarried or wait and see if she can be reconciled to her first husband who has left her. She is still bound to the law of her husband according to St. Paul's words in Romans 7 verses 1 through 3. Concerning separation, a married couple can separate or divorce for sound reasons other than fornication and adultery, but their only options are to remain separated or reunite according to 1 Corinthians 7 verse 11. A couple who separates and or divorces and then remarries any other person other than their first spouse is living in adultery and must repent or they cannot inherit the kingdom of God according to 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 and 11 and Galatians 5 verses 19 through 21. The Will of God for Your Marriage Some of our viewers may be wondering what the will of God is for their current marriage situation as the Bible teachings they have heard in this video series have probably enlightened them to truth on marriage and divorce. Here is our sincere, prayerful, and godly advice for our viewers. First, if you find yourself in the perfect will of God, meaning God is pleased with your full and complete obedience to God's word in regards to your marriage relationship, stay happily in your current state and seek not to be loosed from your spouse and children. Second, if you find yourself in the permissive will of God, meaning God is not pleased with your disobedience, probably fornication or adultery, and God has allowed you in your own free will to disobey his word despite his desire for you to walk in obedience, recognize first if you are or are not a follower of God's end time message sent through his prophet, William Branham. If you are not a follower of God's message given to William Branham, then we encourage you to seek godly counsel from your pastor before making any marriage decision if you are living in fornication, or before you make any family-altering decision if you're an adulterer. We pray that you will first seek to remain in your current marriage and family situation, for God hates divorce and is deeply grieved when children are left motherless or fatherless. If you are a follower of God's end-time message sent from William Branham, then we encourage you to contact your pastor and seek his Bible-based wisdom on the will of God for your marriage and seek not to be loosed from your spouse and children. 
We want to close by remembering the notable and inspired words of Brother William Branham that he spoke by permission from God to the followers of his message who were caught in the permissive will of God, being in their second or third marriages, yet having living divorced spouses from their first or second marriages. God told his prophet William Branham that those caught in adultery, second or third marriages, were given permission by God to remain in their current marriages and not to break up their homes and families and to go on serving God. God commanded them to never divorce and remarry ever again. And he told those parents to teach their children to never live in adultery, never divorce a spouse, and then remarry another spouse, for that would be teaching their children to commit adultery. Now I'm speaking to our Followers only who's following me and this message. Only, not the outside. Bear me record of this before God. Just to this group only. Now, you believe this to be true. Amen. And believe it to come from God. Amen. And by the vindication of His cloud and His message has brought me this far. Amen. Should not God up on the mountain permit me to do the same thing, to suffer you, to go on the way you are and do it no more? Go with your wives and live in peace. For the hour is late. The coming of the Lord is at hand. We haven't got time to break these things up. Don't you dare try to do it again. I'm speaking only to my congregation. But if you are married... And God bore me witness of that on the mountain that I could say this. Amen. A supernatural revelation because of the opening of the seven seals. And this is a question in God's Word. Let them go on and as they are and sin no more. So under the modern conditions, I command you to go to your home with your wife now. If you are happy with her, live with her. Raise your children in the admonition of God. But God be merciful to you if you ever do that again. You teach your children to never do a thing like that. Bring them up in the admonition of God. And now that you are as you are, let us go now to the late evening hour that we're living in and press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ for all things will be possible. If you would like more Bible scriptures and quotations about marriage and divorce, please contact us. God bless you, and may Jesus Christ be the desire of your heart.